Professor Jampo, oh, please, this is why I bring you in because you see, he raises raises a fundamental question about about no 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 hold on hold on hold on gentlemen no no Sam George Sam George Sam George Sam George gentlemen hold on so. Professor Jampo, I, I, Professor Jampo, I, I bring you at this point on this matter that no, no, Sam George, Sam George, you, you don't, Sam George, you don't have the floor. The judge who decided you don't have the floor. Your microphone is off. Your microphones are off. Your microphones are off. Thank you. Now, Professor, Professor Jampo. For example, I bring you on this point on the matter of governance and this issue uh, that this ruling indeed brings forth because it's not just a legal matter, it is also having governance and political implications as well. In fact, there was a fundamental question that was asked about what constitutes political affiliation because in, in the ruling and the minds of the Supreme Court justices who ruled in favor of the plaintiff, they argue that for a seat to be vacated, the person has to move from one political party to, to the other, and not necessarily going as an independent candidate. Prof. Well, thank you. Me, I, I think after listening to um, Justice William Atuguba, I'm wondering whether I have anything useful to add. I think he's been fantastic and his delivery on this matter um, is a man that I have a lot of respect for. He cares about institutions and how institutions will have to function well um, to bring about good governance. And so I don't know what I have to say um, in addition. He said all the issues, yes, there are serious issues with regards to the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in this matter. And then he's telling me and all of us that if it's about, if that matter is not settled, then everything else that happens, you know, afterwards, I mean, it's all yes. avoid. Yes. And so um, he's also raised issues with, you no, know, there, there's another issue with an attempt to order, you know, Parliament as to how it goes about then, it, it, its activities. There is um, um, an issue also raised with respect to the mode of appointing um, justices, justice, uh, justice. justice of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And then he put it aptly that you cannot say that an, institu an institution should be independent and that it hurts <laughs> should be for you. It, it doesn't make sense. And um, if, we are, we have, if we have people with the mindset of statesmen and women running this country, they would, they would endeavor to question and interrogate some of these things and, and change them. Um, but it appears that um, all those people that we've so far um, had as leaders, uh, many of them haven't had the mindset of uh, statesmen and statewomen. And so they have oftentimes pandered to the weaknesses of the system mm -hmm. and also exploited the weaknesses of the system, you know, to their advantage. You're talking about empaneling of judges, you know, um, to sit on, 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 on matters, matters like this, a matter like this that um, ha, um, has created a serious constitutional crisis. And you are asking for judges, you are looking for judges to sit on a matter, and you don't bring the experience once, and you are told that the, the Chief Justice has the, he has a constitutional mandate and he has the power to empanel and all. Uh, uh, have you noticed that since people are going to go back, he has mm. a beef with Bafu Bonnie mm. and sought to sideline him. This is a time to say everything. Oh, well, 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 for example, oh, no, make let's, your point. let's make the oh. point. Justice oh. Bafu Bonnie, if you like, uh, listen, uh, ask sources. Ekufuado has consistently sidelined him since he took over, just because Bafu Bonnie wrote against him in 20, uh, the 2012 oh. petition. He didn't have the case. Yeah. The okay. voters went. Let's end that. I was going to come voters to Voters went so and you, expressed you, you their will. And you're saying that Bafu Bonnie should rule for you that because the presiding officers did not sign, then we should annul votes. What law is that? Administrative 
uh, in, in inadequacies or inefficiencies cannot be used to nullify the wishes of the masses. And since then, since Ekufuado took over, he has consistently sidelined Bafu Boni. Have you ever seen him inviting Bafu Boni to the Jubilee House? Things that Bafu Boni, as a uh, this senior judge of Supreme Court, should do, no. He never wants to see Bafu Boni. I'm the one saying it. If you want, go and ask. You well, say, okay. I, 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 I've said that. Hey, well. hey, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, I, no, 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 because All right, yeah. you, you was, uh, can I hear you clearly. Make, make your point. Okay, so um, um, we were to ask for President Akufuado. I've said I'm not going to talk about him again. It's, you know, uh, no, no, no. It's, it's checked out, so I'm not talking about him again. Like a in the uh, I mean, if you talk about <laughs> For example, we talk about him continuously. <laughs> I mean, he's checked out and it, it amounts to romancing a stone. I'm not interested in romancing a stone. But so we're talking about a um, paneling of judge, um, justices, you know, judges to sit on um, such important cases. And we are being told that, well, the constitutional right of the chief justice to be um, paneling and so she can decide whoever she wants to sit mm -hmm. on the case and all that. You see, rigid application and following of such constitutional um, uh, um, requirements ushers people into a regime of robots. We should be able to think about the consequences okay, of our actions, especially when handling matters like this. Otherwise, then the, cons uh, the, 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 the trust, the public trust and confidence in the Supreme Court would continue to be decimated. And I am surprised and a bit worried that, as I've indicated earlier, the Supreme Court itself doesn't seem to be appear, uh, doesn't seem to be interested in how it is perceived, you know, out there. Otherwise, in such an important matter that is creating a constitutional crisis, you would have looked for people. You know, there are certain people mm -hmm. um, who, when you they preside over some of these cases. Even if you don't agree with them, you will see wisdom um, in, their, in, in their pronouncement, in the way and manner um, they go about things, uh, by virtue of the fact that they are experienced, they are more learned, they are more, um, they've been there for long. Okay, but if you bring um, um, people whose, whose decision we can easily predict, and um, given what they have done in the past, then it becomes a bit problematic. So um, these are some of the preliminary issues mm -hmm. that um, have been raised earlier, and I agree with them. But you see, the, uh, the substantive matter that I wanted to address, um, it appears that Justice Atububa is saying that if the matter about jurisdiction is not settled, then all other things that you know, come up, you know, becomes um, invalidated and all that. So, yes, if indeed the Supreme Court didn't have the jurisdiction in this particular matter, um, was it that they were thinking that the high courts wouldn't have done a good job or what? I mean, so why the, um, the, the, hasty, the haste in going to usurp you know, the powers of the lower courts. I think that they should have allowed the lower courts to and handle this matter. And more importantly, Alfred, you've heard me say severally that, you see, in this particular matter, the courts, in my view, were in the place to resolve the matter. Um, I heard some judge saying that parliament has its own standing orders as to how some of these things could have been um, addressed. And this would have brought about some peace See, they're going to court and looking for adversarial means to address some of these matters will yield a certain benefit. But I can tell you that it rather has opened the, the gates for more problems in our governance system mm. uh, um, um, to be unearthed. Because, yes, you may have won. You may have gotten the Supreme Court to decide in a particular way for you, predictably. But what are you going to do? Parliament is still not functioning and government business must run how are you going to ensure that the rest of government business will go on 
And I was expecting that there will be discerning people, there will be mature people, there will be sober, sober minded people who would have thought about all these things before quickly rushing to the courts and asking them that they should use their adversarial processes to, um, um, to address this particular matter. And uh, uh, well, we live to see. But I'm saying that those who are celebrating that they've gotten their cause to decide in a particular way, they have not won anything. Because now the real deal is going to be how Parliament is going to be responded. Mm -hmm. How about if they decide, the minority side decide that well, we are also not going to um, be part of you know, processes. How are you going to achieve um, that quorum to be able to make important you know, decisions? And so I am a bit worried that we, in our quest to upset the balance of power that is expected to exist between the arms of government, you know, have 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 now um, um, created more problems, you know, for ourselves and for our democracy. And I I I, I think that look, if there are level-headed people in this country, and if if leadership of of political parties would be matured enough, we are not looking for youthful youthful exuberance. We are looking for leadership. I've always said that look in the aftermath of the 2008 elections i know leaders who led the processes behind the scenes to ensure the transfer of power from um, one um, um, the outgoing government to the uh, new um, newly elected government and i'm expecting such caliber of people to be at the forefront of leadership when it comes to um, 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 parliament mm -hmm. okay i think that there is too much boisterousness being being shown on the floor of parliament and in navigating these processes it doesn't help so that's why we are here we, we, we are where we are and then i also want to make the point that you see alfred you have listened to me right from the beginning of this matter yeah. up to now Indeed. my position actually is in sync with the mpp's position and i don't mind i mean espousing it again my position is in sync with their position. It's just that because of their practice of unprincipled politics, sometimes they are annoying. You must first of all admit that Michael Kwe goofed. When Okwe erred in giving that judgment, and when it was in favor, you liked it. Why didn't you take it to court? And so you should first of all come out clearly to say that Ghanaians, um, when we did that, and uh, Michael Kwe, it was wrong, and we are apologizing. And this party, in this particular matter, too, we think that the speaker, is, and then we, you can be building a certain consensus, you, you can be showing a certain principle, you can be telling all of us that you believe in what is right, you are doing principled politics. But during Okwe's time when he was wrong, you were happy and excited about that. The president, Akufuado himself, was going about saying that he was not going to be working with a Siyama. Okay, you liked it. Now another speaker does it, and then you you take him to court, and you want us to all of a sudden pretend that we've forgotten what happened, you know, in the past. And if you do that, you see, then you are annoying. And when um, Asifua was talking, I was mm -hmm. expecting him. Like I said, I believe that um, a declaration of an intention to contest a future election should not valid, invalidate one's membership of parliament and one rep one's representative role in a current parliament. And if you recall, I gave the historical antecedent to it. You now are studying, or you just completed law. But before law, no, we... Not just that. Uh, sorry, well, you, 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 um, you've studied law, you are lawyer. But you see, lawyers should know that every law that is passed would have something that made the law to be passed. And that was how come the last time I went through the historical antecedent mm -hmm. um, um, of, of this particular law that, um, 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 that seeks to deal with cross capital. I told you that long ago, in 1958, Kwame Nkrumah had passed the Notorious, Pre Preventive, um, uh, Notorious Preventive Detention Act of 1958. Mm -hmm. And that act of parliament was simply to say that if you are a suspected political enemy of the regime, mm -hmm. the law enables Kwame Nkrumah to throw you into jail for five years. You go into his own and then come before your matter will be heard. And through this law, he was terrorizing so many political opponents. RR and Ponsa and Co. He was terrorizing all of them. 
And through this law, people of the NPP, Northern People's Party, J. Braimer and Co., some of them, they had their, their, some of them, they are pastors, some of them, they are, they are relatives, some of them, they are well wishers, had to go and plead with them that given how Nkoma is handling you, you must simply cross carpet to get, to be able to get your peace of mind. And through that, Nkoma used, using that intimidatory tactics, got some of these people who were opposed to him to cross carpet to support the CPP. And so the cross carpeting took place um, in, the, in, in, in that parliament mm. of the CPP. And it was true that that Nkoma got the majority of you know, votes to be able to pass the Republican, you know, 1960 Republican, uh, promulgate that um, uh, 1960 Republican constitution. Okay, mm -hmm. so the point is this if you are in parliament today, your decision should be to, um, to cross carpet, if you take it today, and so you are. I mean, we all know um, 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 what why you saying when you were uh, talking um, because you are annoying. You couldn't, I couldn't supply you um, with that information. But you, you, you can bring why you saying this example. Why you saying he was a member of parliament, and in that same parliament he moved to another political party, and then he signaled the speaker. His seat was declared vacant, and then an election. So the decision to take um, to take a certain. The, the decision to contest for a position, okay, on another party's ticket in a future election, it does not mm -hmm. take note of this. The idea of cross carpeting is to reduce the numbers of, of, of your opponents in parliament. Okay, so when Nkoma encouraged or intimidated people to cross carpet, he reduced, by 1960, he had reduced the MPP's, the Northern People's Party's numbers significantly, okay? Mm -hmm. But this idea that we are talking about, the issue that is currently confronting us, it is not reducing the MPP's numbers in Parliament. Yes. They still have, one, is it 136 or 137? 136. 136. No, no, no. They use it to sack Alan and Co. Well, it's because well, now well, they well, see well, they are hurt. And that is why so well, they are saying that the lack of well, well, support policies. Well, 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 now, now he's he's but said. Oh, hold on. So, so now apologize to the So apologize to them. Let me. Sam, this is law. Sam, this is law. Sam, this is law. Sam, this is law. Hold on, he's not the member of the party. Hold on. He today he is he answered that question. So I mean, okay, hold on. So if if and it is true, if a party's constitution is subservient to national a national form a national constitution, then the MPP O. Um, or you need to um, medicine man hoops in Adoye. I call him medicine man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he didn't to uh, hoops in Adoye, Alan Sherman, Mbwabia Samoa. You owe them an apology and great compensation because, well, well, I mean, you may disagree, but the point is this the point is this if you say that they have automatically forfeited mm -hmm. okay their membership of your party by virtue of the fact that they moved to another party mm -hmm. and, um, and 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 today you are also offering a certain defense that goes contrary to um, um, the position of your party's constitution then i think in all fairness if you are doing principled politics mm -hmm. see, our side challenge side. our there's challenge there's is that different. we we Bro, lack principles when it comes to Bro, um, our politics so what we did yesterday that was wrong mm -hmm. and we supported today if we want to vary it then we we we, we, we we look at other reasoning and it doesn't help so my position is simple yes i i I agree with the uh, issues that have been raised with the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in this matter. Right. But my position is that if somebody takes a decision today that in 10 years' time I will contest um, an election on another party's ticket, um, it should not invalidate the person's membership you know, of, of parliament today. And when I'm saying, say absolutely. When it's, it's agreeing with you, say absolutely. But when we disagree to you, you are, you are calling me so, names. So you see, Prof, <laughs> this, 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 Prof, Prof, you know, I'm uh, saying prof, you prof, generically. Example, <laughs> for example, this, this matter obviously wouldn't have become an issue based on the stance that you espouse. If the MPP itself 
didn't have this provision in their constitution, which Mr. Sefwa says now that it, it is unconstitutional. And in fact, they would have to even amend their constitution if the implication of the Supreme Court ruling is anything to go by, because it renders that provision on the forfeiture of their membership now and void of no effect because of the consequence of this particular ruling. Well, it's okay. Not? I mean, constitutions, I mean, there are, the 1902 constitution says that if your law is in contravention with um, what the parent constitution, uh, uh, mother law of the country is, then we have to set yours aside. So mm -hmm. he admitted, but you see, he didn't have the courage and boldness to say that, look, uh, maybe then um, our constitution, we should just set aside that provision. But the point is this. Your constitution is your constitution. If your if the um, if the mother constitution of the country that is supposed to be upheld and superior to your constitution says something um, um, other you know otherwise you no know, or different from your constitution, then we have to uphold what is in the national constitution. And you should be both sincere and candid in admitting some of these things. But you see, like I said, we don't have principles in the conduct of our politics. So the very things that we said was good um, yesterday, today if it is being done to us, we say it's not good. And rather than resorting to very conciliatory, conciliatory and a matured way of handling matters, we run to Supreme Court. And why do we run to Supreme Court? Because we know those who are there. You see, it is, it is normal. Let me tell you, in, in, in advanced, yeah, because we know those who are there. In advanced democracies, mm -hmm. uh, Trump is in. He would appoint okay, people of that, that, who believe in his ideology. Okay, people who see eye to eye with him. If right. there is a vacant position in the U.S. Supreme Court, he would appoint people he believes in, uh, you know, there. People who see eye to eye. So for me, mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it is not too much of a big deal that, look, Martin, um, tomorrow if I become a president and we share, we share the same ideas on some, um, on, on some issues and I'm appointing a chief justice, but Martin, I know you agree with me, and so then I'll take you there. But you see, so in those, in it. those, in we those, no, no, hold on. In those, in those jurisdictions, you see, in those jurisdictions, um, the people who do may be um, in agreement with the appointing authority in terms of ideological persuasions um, will still have the courage to look into the appointing authority's face and say, though ideologically we agree, but right. this one we think you are wrong. But in our part of the world, we appoint people who are expected to be at idem with us in terms of ideological persuasion. And these people are not able to assert themselves to, 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 to say that, yes, even though you appointed me and mm -hmm. I agree ideologically with you, this one you are wrong. They are not able to say that. And so they are always thankful to the appointing authorities in everything that they do. They are always behoving to the appointing authorities on everything that they do. And that's how come, in my view, in developing democracies, when we are appointing people into such higher positions of public trust, we should look at people who, apart from the fact that they may be agree with us, they would have the courage, the fortitude, the, the strength, and the ability to look into the faces of the appointing authorities and tell them, this one, you are wrong. This one, we don't agree with you. It's becoming one too many. When people are appointed, they are always behoving, they are always looking up to the appointed authority, even when they know that the appointed authority cannot even sack them. What is wrong with us? But, Prof, you see, uh, and staying on this matter, because, you know, I, 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 let me conclude with Prof, because I'm still dwelling on the governance matter and then also the, the, the legal issues that you have dealt with. To the extent, because you make reference to the historical antecedents leading to this, the context and the, the mindset of the framers of the Constitution in putting Article 97 there, was meant to check a situation. Yeah. And the Constitution, be a living document, obviously will go through some of these reforms. But, for instance, in 1979, which I know this popular front party, Victor Usu's party, led the opposition in parliament against Ehela Liman at the time. Two principal members of Victor Usu's party, lawyer Kwekuba, and also uh, J.H. Usu Champo, if you recall, entered parliament on his party's ticket. But eventually, 
they later declared that they were no longer part of his party, mm -hmm. yet they remained in, in that parliament. Mm -hmm. They continued to do so until the 1981 coup. So the framers of the constitution, having this and mindful of the events of 1979, Article 971 GNH maybe were introduced to, to address and prevent such mischief, is it not? Well, I, I think, you see, if somebody violates or run afoul of, of a constitutional provision, we'll have to make sure that um, the rule is implemented. What the, 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 the 1979 issue that you are referring to was a clear uh, violation of, 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 of the constitution, and somebody should have taken the matter up. And you see, one of the, one of the challenges of developing democracies is that um, rules are not implemented, even when people run afoul of the rules. Sometimes we look at um, those who may have broken the rules and then we decide to let it slide. So the mm -hmm. point is that um, uh, uh, what happened in 1979 was not good. And you do not expect that, um, that and that's how come what happened in um, um, during the time of Wayosini mm -hmm. was also what was 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 uh, was addressed. Okay, Wayosini got to parliament on the ticket of a political party, and then within that same parliament, mm -hmm. he said that I'm no longer a member of this party, and that was how an action was taken um, to make sure that um, a by-election was held. Okay, to 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 address um, um, that situation. So my view on this matter, um, fortunately or unfortunately, agrees. And I speak based on conviction. I don't care about if it agrees or it disagrees with anybody, but purely based on what I've researched and what I know, the reason why the idea of putting in place legislation to deal with cross capital was to ensure that whilst you are in parliament, you don't move to another part, uh, party within that same parliament. It was never aimed at addressing a future ambition or intention. Me and Kuku Azar, uh, we agree on this. And so, right from my, the word, I knew that um, the Supreme Court was going to um, rule in a manner that is in sync with my position. But the challenge I have with the Supreme Court is that, you see, the predictability, let me see, if we, if, if we talk about strengthening institutions of state, we simply say that um, there must always be rules to regulate how things are done. Mm -hmm. Number two, the rules of the game must always be well known. Number three, the rules must be enforced. Number four, the rules must be internalized. Number five, the rules must be predictable. Okay, if you say the rules must be predictable, what we are saying is that um, we should be able to predict what would happen to um, you when you run afoul of the rule. That's what you mean by the rules should be predictable. Now, in talking about the rules being predictable and then the... Pred uh, um, uh, in talking about the rules being predictable in relation to the functioning of the Supreme Court, yes, it is good that we are able to predict the, the, the Supreme Court, but the way and manner will we predict the Supreme Court must be in the area that we can always be... Um, predictive with some certainty that the Supreme Court would rule based purely based on competence. The Supreme Court will rule and it will not throw consistency to the dogs. The Supreme Court will rule and then the judgment will be seen as fair even if we disagree. But right. it appears that now we can predict the Supreme Court that um, look, they will rule in a certain way and then they will do so in a manner um, that is um, um, pushed or driven by um, partisan politics, and it is it is it is not it is not the best. So people mm -hmm. can predict. Oh, as for these people, now that the matter is going there, um, by by virtue of sheer partisan politics, we can predict that um, they would go this this line, and that is not the kind of predictability we are talking about when we are talking about uh, when we argue for um, the central argument of the institutional school of thought that says that rules should be predictable. Okay. It shouldn't be like that. Should we should be. only be able to predict that, look, the Supreme Court would act fairly. We should be able to predict that the Supreme Court would act in a manner that is consistent with its earlier position. Okay, you okay. are saying that we should not under any circumstance entertain any move that would ensure that people are not represented. You are saying it. And the, the justice we are talking about was talking, articulating this brazenly. And I'm saying that 
you are inconsistent and you are not principled because you know that others have not been given representation for close to four years. And you okay. ruled in a manner, in this judge question, question uh, matter, you ruled in a manner that denied momentarily, temporarily, representation of some people. And yet you are espousing principles and judgment that goes contrary to that thing that the courts had done previously. And so you are not consistent. Okay. And, and it, it, it is worrying. And Thank so you. I like, I agree with many of the things that Justice At Atuba, you know, said. And it's important that we staff the courts with people what? who have statesmen and statewomen mentality.